Hello, this is Ken Abbott, Mr. Abbott, and I'd like to invite you to the first version of Grand Avenue Middle School's Earth Science Lab Review Series. Um, we're going to be discussing today the sun's path in Belmore. Uh, I'd like to have a shout out to Mr. Tom Gazda from Ichabod Crane High School who gave me the inspiration for trying to see how this works. So. We will go through and review a lab. Uh, you're going to be evaluated based on your lab and the lab quiz at the end when you hand in your lab. So let's hope this works out and helps you to understand what's going on. All right, so there are two pages on this lab. The first page has the written directions. The second page shows you a celestial sphere model for the sky. It's showing you the path of the sun for each of the seasonal dates. One important thing to consider is that it's giving you the latitude for Belmore, which we're going to use as 40.5 degrees north. It's actually around 40 degrees, 40 minutes north latitude, but we'll just round it out to 40.5 degrees north latitude. Now, flipping back to our first page, let's go through the directions. Draw the appropriate information on the celestial sphere diagram. As you complete each step, check it off on the corresponding line. You must use a pencil. You will lose a point if you use pen, etc. Please note the solid cross lines that go through the reserver are over the, only there to help you line up the protractor when you need it. They have no other significance. The, the sort of dashed lines that are going across on the celestial sphere model right here, these lines are lines of sight towards each direction along the horizon or along the azimuth. So let's look at the directions. Number one says label the horizon, polaris, and the zenith. So if I look at this, the horizon is where the sky appears to meet the earth. When you label something, you put an arrow and the word or the label. So this circle, which actually goes completely around the observer, 360 degrees, is your horizon. Okay, the zenith is the imaginary point directly overhead. So we start off at the observer. I'm going to go to directly above an altitude of 90 degrees. Directly overhead would be the observer's zenith. Now, we know that Polaris is going to be located above the northern horizon because Polaris is the north star. And when you look at Polaris, okay, since Belmore is at 40.5 degrees north, Polaris should be at 40.5 degrees north. So I'm going to draw a little angle here up to show you that that angle which would be the altitude of Polaris would be here and this should be a 40.5 degree angle and that star up here is Polaris. So I've labeled the horizon, the zenith, and Polaris. So I'm going to check off number one. Now, label north, south, east, and west. Okay, they only gave me north. But when I look at this, here's my diagram. If north is here, south is going to be on the other end. Okay. When you look at it, you would go north. This mark right here would be east. This mark over here would be west. So east is in the foreground and west is in the background. If you measured the number of degrees clockwise from north around the horizon, that would be your azimuth, and those would go from 0 to 90 to 180 to 270, and then back to 360 for north. But with north on the right, east is in the foreground. So we're going to check this off. Draw the arrowheads on the sun's path to show the direction of daily movement. Put the arrowheads on the lines already given to you. So, you've got three Path of the Sun diagrams, okay? The sun always rises in the east and sets in the west. 
So the point along the eastern horizon is going to be sunrise, but in the morning the altitude of the sun goes up, in the afternoon the altitude of the sun goes down. So on each line I'm going to put arrows showing you that it's rising in the east, it's getting higher until you hit solar noon, and the sun is going to be setting towards the west. So we put arrows on all three of the paths to indicate the daily motion. Now, you should know that it's moving at 15 degrees per hour. Now, the dates that they're giving you, June 21st, you could write as 621. December 21st is 1221. March 21st, I would probably write as 321. And September 23rd is 923. Those are the seasonal dates. Now, because we're in the Northern Hemisphere, June 21st is the summer solstice. December 21st is the winter solstice. March 21st is the spring, also sometimes called the vernal equinoxes. So you have the spring equinox. And September 23rd is the fall or autumnal equinox. Now, summer represents the longest day of the year, and summer is going to have the highest angle. So this path, which goes up here, is going to be the path for 621. So the summer path is the longest, highest path. The winter path, which is going to be down here, is 1221. Now, the path in the middle is going to be both equinoxes. That's going to be 321 and 923. Honestly, sometimes on the Regents, they'll write 921 because the dates can vary slightly based on your time zone and the exact time when the vertical ray of the sun crosses the equator. So the, the dates are relative. They, they, they can change one or two days plus or minus. So we've labeled the lines. Now, label the position as of sunrise on the summer solstice, the winter solstices, and the equinoxes. So sunrise is somewhere towards the east. Okay, On the equinox, sunrise is always due east. So this point represents sunrise on the equinox. On June 21st, the sunrise is the farthest north for the entire year. So that would be sunrise for 621. And over here, you'd have sunrise on your winter solstice. So on the winter solstice, the sunrise is the farthest south of east for the year. The summer solstice is the farthest north of east. On the equinox, the sun is rising due east and setting due west. So that's usually the easiest path to find, because on the equinox path, you see that it's always going directly east to directly west. All right, so we've completed number five. Now, label the position of sunset. Okay, write the word sunset. So, when you look at these diagrams, okay, I'm looking at my east to west line, and it's not going perfectly across the page. It's going across at an angle. So the sun rises in the east, it gets higher until you hit solar noon, which is the maximum angle for the day, and then it sets in the west. So this point along the western horizon where the path hits the horizon would be sunset. That would be sunset on June 21st. That's the farthest north it would be. 
this point over here would be sunset on 1221. So as we approach the winter solstice, each day the sun is setting farther south until we reach the winter solstice when the sun's position at sunset, the azimuth, would be the lowest for the year. All right, so we can check off number six. Number seven, write the name of each season on the appropriate line. Okay, so we want summer, winter, spring, and fall. So I'm going to turn it a little sideways so it's easier to write. The longest, highest path is summer. That's the summer solstice. On spring and fall, on the equinoxes, you get the exact same path of the sun with the same angles. Okay, the equinox path is always 12 hours, so it's going to be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then the lowest, shortest path is going to be winter. In New York, honestly, that's about 9 hours of daylight. So, we have accomplished number 7. We've done all of those. So... 8 says, use a protractor to determine the altitude of Polaris and record the altitude next to Polaris. All right, so I already drew the line earlier. To use the protractor, all right, I want to put, put this here. I'm going to line that up. My line, the vertex of my line, has to be directly there. And this protractor doesn't work with the lab because the drawing must be skewed. So I don't actually need the protractor. Sorry about that. All right. When you're looking at this, your protractor is on the outside and this is slightly up. You can't even tell because of this, but it's half of a mark up from 40. So since the latitude is 40.5 degrees north, 40.5 degrees would be the altitude of Polaris. Okay. Now, label the positions of solar noon for each line. Okay. Every single day when we watch the sun, the sun rises somewhere towards the east, and when it hits the maximum altitude, the highest position each day is considered to be solar noon. So this line would represent solar noon for each path. Solar noon is when the sun is highest in the sky. When the sun is at the highest angle, that's when you're going to get your shortest shadows. So we've labeled the position of solar noon for each time. Now, for step number 10, it's asking us to use the protractor. That protractor is going to be on the model. So we need to take a look at what those angles are. So in the next step, I'm actually going to do the calculations to help you figure out those angles. You could read them directly, but the announcements are on, so I will have to continue this after extra help. All right, we shall finish this later. Goodbye for now.